Welcome to session two of Boomers, Millennials, and Overcoming the Generational Gap in the Workplace. I am Karen Conley, and I hope you had a chance to join us for part one. If not, go ahead, pull it up at some point, um, but, but stick with us because part two is going to be fascinating. And I have back with me two great friends. I, I think I can call you friends. I've spent time with both of you and love you both dearly and just have such respect for the work that you do. Um, Mick Euclea is the president and CEO of Leadership Track. Um, he's the author of many books, a professor, I could go on and on, but his most recent book, Managing the Millennials. Mick, welcome back. Thanks for having me back. And everybody who's a sports fan loves the backdrop that you've got right there. So uh, I, I, like, I like your backdrop. Who can't love the Lakers and Jordan right there? So um, thanks for coming back. And Danita Bai is with us. Um, you are amazing as well, an entrepreneur, a speaker, an author. And your most recent book is called Millennials Matter. So we've got two fantastic experts as we jump into part two. And in this particular segment, what we wanna do is really learn about the millennial generation. Um, look at their attributes, maybe some of the stereotypes and some of their um, kind of the kryptonite, the pride and fear that might um, creep into this generation in contrast to what we saw for the boomers in our previous podcast. So, um, Danita, let me throw it to you. Just kind of lay the foundation for the conversation. Describe maybe the general attributes of a millennial to us. I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna start with stereotypes because when okay. you say the word millennial, no matter where you at, people will say uh, entitled, lazy, not, uh, not loyal. Uh, well, work to live, the inexperience, uh, always living on their phone. So when you say the word millennial, that is the very first thing that comes to mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, in terms of current age group, um, I'm going to say 24 to 39, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. uh, what I've observed, and I'm sure Mick will say the same thing, is that this, even though it's those age groups, there were so many changes that happened culturally within the time frame mm -hmm. that really that upper age group sees things different than the lower end of the generation. And then there's becoming even a segmentation within that where uh, some are. I'll call them like super millennials, and then others are the me millennials. Those are the ones that live in the basement. So. <laughs> and is that a stereotype, or is that statistically true? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Very good. So, Mick, maybe you could build on to what Danita just said. Um, other attributes that you would add. Um, and then specifically, maybe also add on to that within the workplace, what, what would you describe? As far as uh, what, what Danita said, I agree with that because about age 30, you see the millennials taking two different paths. Some take the path of what we would call normalcy. Uh, that's by our definition. And they do the same things we do. They just do them later. The others, as Danita said, sort of stay in the basement and that was a good description of it. I think uh, she did mention entitled and lazy and disloyal and uh, you know, anti-authority, but really when we unpack this, is it, are they really entitled or are they simply just more entrepreneurial? And we see that as being entitled. Mm -hmm. Or are they lazy or is it productivity redefined because they think there's an easier way to do it. And sometimes we get that, they don't wanna make 200 copies on the machine because they have a better way to do it, so we think they're lazy. Uh, are they disloyal or is it, are they seeking purpose and therefore they're not to an organ? So the, all the stereotypes can have meaning and some of them are ill-placed. Anti-authority or is it respect redefined? Another thing that makes up a millennial basically is, is something I call the self-esteem movement. We raise them uh, as a kid-centric group 
And therefore, we are surprised when they come to work and they want to be themselves the way we've raised them, where we were taught to sit down and shut up. You know, you, you're spoken, you speak when you're spoken to. Another thing is power, they have incredible power in our homes when they were raised. Uh, raised in praise-based and democratic-based homes, and they had, were able to make decisions on what we purchased. In fact, even would say things like, don't get that, that's not a new, that's not a good one. Here's the kind of technology you need to purchase, the kind of TV and the kind of rest. They have their tech authority. Not all of them are tech authorities, but they are very tech dependent, especially the younger ones. Immediacy, this is a big one. Immediacy, they want things now because they can get things now. So is it fair to say that oftentimes when we hear these negative stereotypes, we're making a character judgment that really might be better defined as the impact of, of the culture or the, a situational impact? Would, would, would either of you affirm that or, or is that a wrong way to think about it? I do. Go ahead, Mick. I'm just going to think, I'll say this. I think the behaviors that we see uh, are what really knock us off our trail sometimes. But if we get under those behaviors and see the intrinsic values that drive those behaviors, then we see incredible similarity. Hmm. They want meaning. They want value. They want to succeed. They want to achieve. You know, they're, uh, they want these things, but we look at certain behaviors and stereotype those and vilify the behavior and not the value underneath it. Where every generation, ours included, was criticized. You, I can read you quotes from Hesiod and Socrates talking about the youth and how they don't want to do this and they dis they're disrespectful. The difference today is the platform is the plethora of platforms that we can criticize with. If you Google, millennials are lazy, entitled, and something else, whatever, you'll get probably 16 million hits off of Google. Mm -hmm. So it's just proliferated. It's just an avalanche. We have more tools today to criticize people than we did when we were growing up. And that's a big difference right there. Absolutely. What's the benefit? If you're a boomer or you're um, a Generation X and you have millennials in the workplace, what are, why should you be excited that they're there? Tell me the benefit of a millennial. Well, what I see is uh, as you're looking to grow your company, you're looking to access new clients. You may be looking to access new markets. You're looking for new products, new services, new ways of going after them. The only way that is going to happen is if you have millennials on your team and they are actively engaged because they are bringing that, they have a, because of the globalism in which they were raised, they have a completely different framework about how they see the world. Mm -hmm. So if we want new and expansive, we have to learn to tap into their brilliance.